Okay, now that let's see how much we remember. Let's go over it again. <laughs> okay. All right, Monty, are you confident in what we just taught? So he'll he'll teach us. Um, so competency in teaching uh, or ministering the word of, in any way comes, uh, and the, and the big one always goes back to experience. Um, you can have instruction, you can have knowledge, you can have um, desire, but until you do it, you will never develop the ability to be what, you know, whatever the Lord is called, not everybody's going to be called to do that. Right. But, uh, be sensitive to the Lord and say, you know, I, I need to step out. I need to step out and, and get a lesson together and teach it to somebody and... Um, because as you notice, we're not <clears throat> going to be around quite so much the next couple of weeks. And so uh, that'll be opportunity for people to step up and say, okay, I'm going to give this a shot. Be ready to fail. Mm. Remember that first uh, time you let the clutch out? Yeah. That's what's <laughs> going to happen. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've been telling you this here. I uh, did, a, did, did Sunday school adult Sunday school and I was very young in the Lord and uh, I uh, I won't tell you the who's and the <laughs> details about it but I literally listened to criticism of my lesson from Craig Colorado to Denver Colorado and that's about a three and a half hour drive telling how bad it was <laughs> and then um, some more coming back home um, I don't understand. You listen. Well, somebody to... was critiquing me. Oh. And I don't know how constructive it was, but I never wanted to get back up there again, ever. All right. I bet. Somebody you had in the car with you? Yeah. She's out, huh? She'd evicted him. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. That may have been true. <clears throat> um, but anyway, we uh, got back and. I was like, I can't do this. I, I remember Saturday night because the Sunday's coming. I'm going, oh, Lord. The Lord was so good to me. <laughs> he gave me this lesson, and it was so easy. And I go, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> turned out really good. Of course, the criticizer took credit for that, I'm sure. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, it wasn't and fixed, No, it was not her. <laughs> it was pastor's wife. Okay, I'll put it that way. <clears throat> We've been delivered from some things, haven't we? Yeah. And sometimes yes. we've been Hallelujah. delivered from some people. Uh, so anyway, thank God. All right, so let's, uh, we'll get into Colossians this morning. Colossians chapter 3. And the deal is this, I'm not saying another word until this is gone out of my mouth. <laughs> so y'all, y'all are on your own until my candy's gone. Uh, can I read something then? Yes, yes, do. <laughs> uh, let's see. So we're going to go to Ecclesiastes 10. Okay. Ecclesiastes Okay, we're going to Ecclesiastes 10. After Proverbs. Yeah, after oh, Proverbs. Oh. <coughs> right before Sons of Solomon. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. The words of a wise man's mouth. Which verse? <clears throat> what? Which verse? 12. Oh, 10, 12? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't hear that part. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. So our words create an atmosphere. Words are powerful carriers. They carry faith or they carry unbelief. Mm -hmm. And whatever we fill our words with will directly affect our lives. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then go to Proverbs 
1821 of Proverbs. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and mm -hmm. they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Mm -hmm. So living in these fleshly bodies, too often we agree with every problem that comes along. Like, oh, I'm sick, or I'm broke, or I'm defeated, mm. or I'm discouraged, mm -hmm. or I'm depressed. Right. Nothing ever goes right for me. Right. But if you can change the way we speak, God has already given us all we need. Mm. Mm -hmm. In Hebrews 10, 23. All right, I'm liking that. Mm -hmm. us, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Mm -hmm. So if our words are carriers of faith, they can create the blessings we live in as we speak God's words to renew our minds, heal our bodies, and will give us strength to overcome all obstacles that may come against us. Mm -hmm. God's words works. Amen. Okay, Amen. that's Thank good. That's Amen. Good. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot of good stuff there. In a, in a few moments, I uh, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. You uh, know, that that word profession means to be in agreement with right. God, basically. Mm -hmm. So I'm in agreement with Him for me. And, yeah. and, and so it is. That. When we speak that way, we don't have to worry about our bank account quite right. as much, do we? Like you began with. Uh, good words. The words of the wise. We're going to call, we're going to give uh, Al the ministry of wisdom. <laughs> He's going to teach us wisdom. Okay. Well, um, if you read your Bible daily, then something will pop up in your head. And okay. you sit down and write something down, and then you go look down concordance and look. Something else pops up with the same meaning. Mm -hmm. So basically, just kind of hopefully comes out the same thing with you. No, we, we appreciate it. And you know, you're all welcome to, to, to say, I got good. something today. Uh, I don't think I'll say no. Just I, some encouraging word for help us. Yes. Amen. Thank you. What everybody's going through. Amen. Mm -hmm. So appreciate that, pal. And uh, so we're going to try to keep our words. On the positive side, and even better on the biblical side side here, um, and so we're back to the book of Colossians, Colossians. and uh, this is we, we went through the first four chapters of verses last week. And is that two? I'm sorry, or three? Chapter two. three. Yeah. Well, we're moving right along mm. <laughs> through Colossians. <laughs> So we got through chapter, I, mean, I keep saying chapter, verse 4. Um, so I'll read the first four without much comment, and then we'll get to five. Um, but I'll just kind of lay it out. Uh, when, when we get to verse five, we get a lot of practical teaching, okay? We kind of leave the, the, uh, the theological realm, and he moves right into our everyday lives. So we're going to read through these. As you read them, if you have a verse, you're welcome to comment on it first. I don't have to take over. So if you see something as you read, uh, just go ahead and, and share it with us. So it begins, uh, chapter 3, verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also mortify. I'm oh, sorry, my, my eyes slipped down. The, okay, which shall also appear with him in glory. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Okay, so I'm going to start with Cliff today. Verse 5. Mortify therefore your members uh, which are upon the earth. Fortification, uncleanness, uh, inordinate affection, evil con uh, conceptionists, and 
covetedness, which is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it, it just went away. I, I know, uh, I'm sure Uh, evil uh, uh, covetousness, which is idolatry. Okay. Anybody have comments on those things? He's telling us some things to not do. <clears throat> Anybody got problems with those? Pray about it. Pray about it. Okay. And I, when I say problems, I'm not saying problems with whether you do that or not. It's a problem of. Uh, Believing, it. believing that yeah. are those things really wrong? Or, or, oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah, they are. Okay, mm -hmm. I've heard people say, "Well, I might have a problem with this or that." I said, "You better do like Pal said. You better pray about it, mm -hmm. because those things are going to come under the judgments of God." So mm -hmm. we want to do what? Verse, verse five, verse one is what? I mean, word number one is what? Mm -hmm. Mortify. mortify. What? Tell me about mortify. What is that? Die to. Okay, you die to. You die to. I can't say it any better. Okay. Uh, is death to something, the death to self, is that part of the teaching of the Bible as, as a whole, especially yeah. in the New Testament? Sure it is. It's part of the gospel. It's part of the gospel. Repentance is death to self. Mm -hmm. So it, is that teaching us that we have to continue to die then? Yeah. Obviously. Paul said he died how often? Daily. daily. Oh, there's that daily walk again, isn't mm -hmm. it? So we die every day. Uh, how many, uh, yeah, we all, we all struggle with things. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so death to self is something that I, I guess there's a competency in that too, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Learning how to, to give up, uh, things. Um, just a couple things and please, uh, share what thoughts come to you. Um, all this is, uh, the joy of Satan. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. The joy of Satan. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's good. Yeah, it is. Obviously, we don't want to give him no joy, so no. Uh, we keep ourselves uh, in check, dying to these things. Concupiscence, right. that's a big word that I can't hardly even say, let alone know right. what it means. But it means to have um, affection toward things that are evil mm -hmm. or restricted or forbidden and so idolatry uh, however that worked back then we don't really understand the idolatry problem I don't think with Israel they always went to the groves and the trees and the high hills and they worshiped Baal and we're going why did they do that it doesn't make any sense to us but some some way or another they had a, a desire to do the forbidden thing and that was um, mm -hmm. uh it's, it's like some things you know you shouldn't do. Anybody ever play golf? <laughs> <laughs> and Craig, they had a real nice golf course. It's down by the river. And on the 15th hole, it's a long hole. There's a tree that stands right over here, just off of the tee box. So you're shooting this way. There's a, tee, there's a tree right over there. And close to the top of the tree is a bald eagle's nest. And they'd be sitting up there sometimes, and, and I go, I don't want to hit that nest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to send the ball with a slice up to that nest. Guess what I would do almost every time? <laughs> okay. I don't know whether it's a desire in me or just the fact that I focus so much on that thing. Ooh, can that ever happen? Mm -hmm. You focus so much on the thing you don't want to do that you end up doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly what the tree was and the bald mm -hmm. eagle nest. I, I, I knew I don't be glad you're not standing there because I wouldn't <laughs> want to hit you either. Sure enough, I'd send the ball your way <laughs> because that's what I don't want to do and I'm focused on it. Amen. And so it becomes a more of an attraction to me, almost in a negative sense. So, mm -hmm. uh, somebody had a pal. Well, I guess what I was trying to say on my what I was reading is because what you speak, it'll happen. Uh huh. Right. So you speak right. in doubts and belief, it'll right. come to you. But right. if you speak words of wisdom and stuff, then that's where your focus is turning to. But if you focus on that one thing, it's going to go that way. Right. 
Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what that proverb verse says, the power of the tongue, and there's life and death yes. is in the power of the tongue, and you will eat of the fruit of it. Which right. fruit? Whichever one you talk about. And you talked about it in there, so it's going to go that <laughs> yeah, way. That's right. And so uh, they finally moved. They flew away. <laughs> I, think <it> was, <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was my fault. But, uh, uh, all right. So mortify these things and, and those things that when we somehow are, are focused on or attracted to for whatever reason is that sin called compute, com, concupiscence or something like that. And, and then it says, and covetousness. Covetousness is the desire for something that you don't have. Mm-hmm. It may not be an evil thing, but just the desire itself is wrong. Um, Anybody relate to that? Yeah. You're not satisfied with where you're at in right. life or what you have. It's, it's a want and not a need. Man. What's that? It's a want, it's not a need. Yeah, it's a want, not a need. And Bev, what did you say? Window shopping. Or Win- okay. just sitting there looking on <laughs> right? the yeah. shopping things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I want that, I want that. Yeah, there's certain <laughs> things that grab my attention. I, some things that I know that I'll never have. Uh-huh. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> I would just see it. But it's too low. You can't sit in it. <laughs> not doing that. Right on, Pat. I, uh, <laughs> on, on Facebook, you can you can join groups of, for anything. And Diane, she said, what are you looking at? I said, I'm looking at a snow jet. <laughs> a lot. Uh, so there's a group for for uh, racing snowmobiles, snow jets, snowmobiles. Mm-hmm. Like Wow, I used to do that. I'm part of this group. And so I'm looking at these machines, and I'm going, wow, I'd like to have that. Yeah. Of course, they're antiques by now, because this <laughs> we're talking the 70s, folks. And um, but, but, you know, I remember, you know what's really weird? Is that I can look at those machines. My uncle had the dealership of that particular brand. Oh. And so I can look at every one of those machines, and I can hear what that engine sounds like. Oh. I can feel how it feels. Wow. And, and it's just like, that, that just comes right back to me. That's the experience thing that we're talking about, mm-hmm. is that you you don't have to dig up those things. It comes right back to you. So right. uh, get confident in some things, and it'll never leave you. You've got it. I mean, how many want it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we can be covetous for the things of God then, desire. Okay. So this, of course, is desire in the wrong sense. Um, six. Chapter, uh, is it, wait, yeah, six, Monty. Well, which things, uh, say, say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Okay, so what's God saying about those listed things above? Wrath. Wrath. Mm-hmm. Wrath is coming upon the children, uh, like, like I said a minute ago, I said, I, I, uh, 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 do you agree with what Paul's saying? Is fornication, mm-hmm. is uh, uncleanness, inordinate affection, inordinate affection? Yep. Are these things are they really bad? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We have to believe that. Mm-hmm. If we believe that oh, it's not that bad, we live in a world that's all messed up, folks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can look out there and you can see people thinking that things are good that anybody with half a brain would know they're not good. Right. And yet it's still happening out there, and they have a voice, don't they? Mm-hmm. The, to turn a, a young lady into a man or a young man into a right. woman or whatever. We're going like this, and yet they're eating this stuff up. Mm-hmm. What's evil because conception is, uh, whatever that word is. That, that's... Uh, Concupiscence. Concup- my Bible says it's um, lustful desire or evil desire. Right. Yeah. That's so true. it's so it's a desire it's for lustful something. Desire or evil desire. Mm. So we desire something that's forbidden. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now we can desire things that are not forbid uh, that are that are okay, but mm. we have to be careful there too because. That desire in itself can be covetousness. Mm -hmm. But concupiscence is a step worse in that it's we desire something that's evil or desire Mm -hmm. something that's forbidden. Mm -hmm. 
that can in turn become an idol. Okay, and that's mm -hmm. what it, that's what it finishes up right. with, isn't it? These are idolatry. Why? Because your heart is going after those things. Mm -hmm. Either you're going after things that are <laughs> that are forbidden, or you're going after things that are not necessarily forbidden, but because you have loved them, <coughs> you have made them idols. Mm -hmm. So, does the Bible say I can't have a Corvette? No. no. Okay. No. But if I love that, right. I send anyway. So it's not a sin to drive any kind of car. Right. But it's a sin to love and desire it so much that it begins to substitute your love for God for love for that. Right. Okay. Well, I'll never own a jack. <laughs> <laughs> Monty, you don't get a XKE. <laughs> no, it's an old jack. Oh, is this a hot wheel? It's a hot wheel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, one of these days you're all going to show up with a gift for me. It's going to be a Hot Wheel Corvette. <laughs> no, don't. I, I really don't care about it. I like, they're pretty, but I don't, I don't have no. Okay, so. <laughs> for which things sake, for these things, for these things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody wants out there. You're not out there, you're in here. Right. Okay? Your your concern, your desire, your heartbeat is for the kingdom of God. Right. And anything that happens to come your way that you like, fine. If it doesn't come your way, fine. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not here, we're not here to obtain things or experience things uh, that that uh, the world does. Mm -hmm. And so he's really saying, be, be careful what you, what you want to be and do. Right. And uh, the children of disobedience. I did look up the word disobedience. It's real close to unbelief. Mm. So disobedience comes because you don't, real, don't believe it. So remember, we asked the question, are these things really wrong? Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. leave exception in your mind for wrong things, you open yourself up to become a child of disobedience because you don't believe that transgenderism is wrong. Mm -hmm. So now you end up being susceptible to that. Right. So when this world is screaming in our ear daily about this right and that right and mm -hmm. this pride and that pride, and all the weird stuff that goes on, and we begin to accept that as, well, maybe it's not so bad. Maybe, you know, all the little things that go on and it's being propagated to us. We've got to shut the door on that stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't think in those terms. You, you go to the Word of God, and you, what, we don't want to become a, children of a child of disobedience. We don't want to become a child of disbelief. Mm -hmm. That's where compromise is so dangerous and mm -hmm. leads to mm -hmm. destruction. Compromise will mm -hmm. lead to destruction in the church, in any aspect of our lives. Right. right. So that's where it begins. It's when we begin to compromise our right. thinking first and our right. actions. We have to stand firm. We have to stand. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Things of God. So these, these lists are important for us to know because they give us uh, give us uh, understanding of where our tendencies may want to go. And we shut the door on those things. All right. Uh, so disobedience yes. is almost like disobeying. Yeah. 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 But it, 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 you won't disobey until you think it's okay. Right. Um. And then sometimes people have a hard time with the church because it has, you know, some teachings and some rules like we're going through here today. Mm -hmm. And they don't like that. And so they, they don't want to be part of, you know, of, of, of that. And they, they, they go, well, that's narrow-minded. Well, it's not narrow-minded. It's the Word of God. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no bigger mind in all the world than God's mind. Don't talk, talk about being narrow. But he knows better what's good for you and what's not good. Mm -hmm. And he's... Uh, in a place of authority to lay down some laws, and it's okay. Mm. So it's like you walk away from this, it's like you're going after your own flesh in a way. Yeah, absolutely. Instead of searching for 
him. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The deal is that searching for him is just about 180 degrees, degrees different than searching for the things that you want. Right. Yeah. His ways are higher than our ways. Right. His mm -hmm. thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So those little things that come up in our lives that say, I want that, you better stop and say, okay, I may, but does God want it? If God doesn't want it in my life, then I need to die to what I'm feeling right here. Yeah. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No, thank you. It's good points. Uh, so there is judgment, the wrath of God. What is, what is wrath? We talked about wrath a little bit. We won't go to... Um, at some point in time, you know, God's wrath is going to settle all of this. It's mm -hmm. going to finish it up. There will be no more question. Mm -hmm. I, I like the fact, you know, the, the idea that when that which is perfect has come, everything's going to be known. And Jesus shows up, there'll be a revelation in everybody's mind, not only of who he is, but of what's right and what's wrong mm -hmm. and who's, who's who and who's not who and all of that. It'll all be settled in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Right. Amen. And uh, so right. he's got a plan. Simple, uh, we want to, we want right. to fit into that. Did I see a hand? Oh. Um, well, the Lord being our father, he wants his children to know who we are in him. He has an original plan and yes. design for us. Amen. And because if we know who are, we are in him, like what we've been talking about, we can become uh, competent in the things of God. And then we're a threat to the enemy. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's going to take all of God's original plans and designs and he likes to mimic it. So he just he tweaks it just enough. <laughs> to not be like an obvious thing, oh, because yeah. a lot of people are too wise for that. They're not going to fall into that trap. Mm -hmm. But people like to think, just because they love this person <laughs> or that person or this animal or this whatever, that that makes it okay to have whatever kind of relationship you want to have with that oh, person oh, or yeah. thing. Right. So... The love of God is pure, and that's the original design of it. And all, all his intentions towards mankind are pure and holy and his design. Because he's the boss. He created everything. Mm -hmm. right. This is what he, he's like, this is the plan I've got. This is how I want it to be. Right. Right. So, But Satan's going to fight against everything. Mm -hmm. You know, every principle and law that the Lord sets up, just like the man and woman thing or, or whatever. Right. Satan is going to try to put confusion and make us think, well, if we love blah, 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 then it's, it, we justify it. Right. We're like, well, we're okay. Right. But we're making ourselves God in a way because right. I, you know, right. I can't even control, you know, my bodily functions. I'm not in control of anything, but I can choose to either obey God's way or not. And you got to, you know, look out for these deceptions and how Satan is going to, you know, because he's coming against every plan that God has. So you right. just kind of right. got to keep that in mind. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that's some good points there. Uh, the, 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 I, we become the determining factor as to what's right and wrong. And I, I hear, and not hear, well, I do hear, maybe I hear, maybe I just read, but people justify homosexuality because, well, I love that person. Love can't be wrong, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, that's that's justification. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. It just told us that that's a sin of concupiscence. Right. You love the forbidden thing. Right. Doesn't say you don't have what? feelings. I didn't hear you. You love the forbidden things. No, no, that before that. Don't make me say that word. <laughs> concupiscence. concupiscence. <laughs> okay. Concupiscence. That's what you asked a few minutes ago, that same word. Um, it's it's loving or desiring <laughs> Evil. Yeah, I'm going to have to practice that word a lot. We're going to have a test next week on how to say <laughs> Okay, so you can have love for some things that are not right for you to have love for. Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. yeah. And the world needs to wake up to that fact because they justify it. As long as there's affection, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Well, hello. Right. Yeah. In a marriage situation, that better not be all right. No. Right? No. Is it possible to have affections beyond into the realm of the forbidden? Yeah. Yes. Happens all the time. Mm -hmm. You better stop that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Eve seen the fruit and was 
affected by it. Okay. Had affection for it. Okay, so in a sense, the first fruit or the first sin itself was this long word that we don't want to say. <laughs> it was a forbidden thing, and she wanted it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're, we're just living in that generation. That's the era that we are living in, where mm -hmm. right and wrong have been all messed up and mixed around, and nobody knows what. Well, guess what? Paul knew. Mm -hmm. God knows. Read the book. Yeah. This is it. This, mm -hmm. is, this is the way it is. All right. Uh, verse 7 to whose turn? Um, Tina. Tina? Tina? Um, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. Okay. Did you all come out of that mess? Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's why we repent of our sins, isn't it? Yeah. That's why we change our life. Do you know you change your life when you walk with God? Yeah. You don't yeah. do what you used to do. Right. You don't talk like you used to talk. The, right. You know, right. on and on and on. Do we sometimes struggle with things? Yep. yep. Sure. But at least we recognize whether it's right or wrong, and we can put effort into our struggle. Right. And with God's help, we will overcome those things. Mm -hmm. But we do know the difference. Right. And if you don't know the difference, you're never going to overcome anything. Right. Because so we once were there. And we're dying daily so that we don't go back there. Yep. Right. Right? Mm hmm Oh, thank you, Lord. I thought you said put your mouth when you try to say something bad. Put your cover your mouth so you doesn't come out of your mouth and verbalize it. I guess. Yeah, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a good point. Mm -hmm. And you're about to verbalize it. And you can shut your mouth. You've stopped a lot of stuff. Right. But it also tells you something. I need to dig a little deeper and see why I wanted to say that in the first place. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Verse eight, pal. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy. Filthy communication out of your mouth. Okay, is that just what you just said? Yep. Yes, it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. It said, watch what comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Blasphemy. Uh, hurtful speech is what blasphemy means. Mm -hmm. Hurtful speech. It comes from the word uh, hurtful speech. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. We won't go into all of it. All right. <clears throat> uh, blasphemy. And, of course, there's blasphemy against the person. But there's also, of course, blasphemy against God. Mm. And, and when we direct our speech in a negative, accusatory manner toward him, we're in that, that realm. Um, and um, filthy communication out of your mouth. Yeah. How many mouths changed? When yeah. you came to God. Yeah. Mine, mine changed. Right. Mm -hmm. Mine changed. Yeah. A bunch. Uh, um, even to the point that sometimes a preacher will get up and say a word that, that I mean, both of us are shocked at. Like, oh, <laughs> did he just use that word? You know, I, I, we wouldn't use that word. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, because some of these uh, euphemisms, isn't that what they call it? A nicer way of saying something bad. No. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of euphemisms out mm -hmm. there that you don't want to pick those up because they mean the same thing as the whole thing. Mm -hmm. as the, as the, as the wicked word, well don't that. soften it down. Yeah. Just, just don't say that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people use profanity because, in my opinion, it helps them to feel like they're saying stuff in a more better way. Emphasized, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if I put this word here in between every other word, like yeah, they are, yeah. and something. all they are is being stupid. Mm -hmm. Uh. The job, <laughs> the job site. You you go to a brand new world of communication when you get on the job. <laughs> I don't know why that is. We don't have to talk like that. We yeah. do not have to talk like that. Say that you're yay be yay and you're nay nay. Mm -hmm. You don't have to emphasize it with cuss words. Right. Make yourself sound tougher. Yeah. Or more whatever. I don't know what it is. Pretty soon it becomes nothing but any idiotic. Yeah. Like, why do you say that? Anyway. Well, I was thinking we wouldn't have much to say on these things. <laughs> yeah, because even on the job, they'll use God as like, um, God dang it. Or something. Uh huh. I'm like, don't use this for anything. Yeah. They're like, what? 
Yeah, you heard. Yeah. You heard. There's, there's a conscience for the job right there, sitting there. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. How many years? 40 some, 45, 46 years since I got the Holy Ghost. Early on, I was at work, and I let one little word slip out. Hmm. And uh, to my knowledge, it's the only time any of that stuff has ever proceeded from these. Hmm. You don't, well, uh, you know, don't excuse yourself. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. Don't say, well, that's just the way I, no. It, you know, we are a lot of ways. Let's, let's get it right. You can change that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, break them in then you say, forgive me, Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. It's not like I committed blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. I was backing up to a dump and it got all messed up and I, oops. Uh, but I, I've seen people, even anyway, be careful. We we'll, won't we'll stay on that. I confess my sin. Mm -hmm. uh, don't let any filthy communication, yeah, that's a pretty strong word, filthy mm -hmm. communication come out of your mouth. Verse 9. Would it be to, pa to, to Coral? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Right. Okay, lie not to one another. Mm. Shoo. Lying is for what purpose? Do what? Self. Self pleasure. Self -pleasure? Yeah. Preservation. Preservation. Yeah. You lie because you're protecting yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're protecting yourself because you've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. And so one lie begets another lie, and pretty soon you're trapped in your yes. in your world of the lies. Mm -hmm. It's and easier to tell the truth. It's, it's way easier to tell the truth, because once you do it, it's done. You lie, you're going to have to cover that lie, and you're going to have to cover that lie, and, you're yep. going to, and it, it's a never-ending cycle until finally you come and say, I can't do this no more, and you confess it all. But instead of confessing one little thing, you end up confessing a whole big world that you made mm -hmm. from from your your you deceitful like time. You the first thing. Uh huh. So the very and that's what. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when mm -hmm. at first we what uh, something to deceive. Something to deceive. I can't. I can't. Uh, but it gets really complicated. <laughs> Uh, to the point that you finally just cannot keep up with all the junk and you have to run away and hide or else confess. One of the two, I guess. Especially, like, whoever's lying and you get first hand of it and you believe it, eventually it's going to come back around to you and there's going to be a different answer and you're going to say, well, I thought you said this, but you're not going to say it. You're going to, yeah. well, you might say it, yeah. but... Yeah. If you remember, if you have a memory of some things and, and it comes back around, then you know that you've been lied to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's different stories. Anyway, no. but you know that it's gone in however many people has talked about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it gets really, really a mess, a really complicated. And uh, I, I know that it's not right to lie really to anybody, but I notice it says lie, lie not to one another. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I don't know that you should ever lie to anybody, but he seems to particularly point out don't lie to one another. Okay. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, you, you can sort that through uh, as you want to. You put off the old man, that you put off the old man with his deeds. And as we get on through here, we're going to see a lot of putting off and putting on. Here. Mm -hmm. We put on Christ through baptism. We've put off the old man through repentance. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and seeing, so, so all of these, these uh, instructions that were given are due to the fact that we put off who we used to be right. and we put on who's, who God has designed us to mm -hmm. be. 
and then we walk in that. Walk in, how does Paul say? Walk in the newness of life, not in the oldness of the flesh. And so we are seeing a lot of, uh, uh, you see the practicality of the, this study compared to some of the others where we're dealing in theologicals and concepts mm -hmm. and stuff. But now we're just, he's getting down to the nitty gritty of how you live. Um, and as we go through it, you, you have to look at each one of those things and decide, well, this is where I struggle and, and make it a point and say, okay, what am I going to do? How am I going to uh, uh, overcome? And uh, I, I, I know we started off with competency uh, from a, a whole different direction, but it, it still comes back that we should be competent in the way that we live for God. That pretty soon that we're not struggling so much because we have made this our manner of life. Um, and, and you can go through everything. So, I, I, I mean, prayer, what you say, what your heart wants, what you desire, all, all of those things uh, can uh, enter in here. And, and we have to examine our lives and say, okay, uh, what is it that we need to work on here? Uh, verse 10 and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Okay, so the new man is renewed in knowledge of him, uh, in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Sure. What are we talking about here? Jesus. Okay. We had a... Where did you read the, the little things? I think it might have been off of Facebook or something. <laughs> and it said the first thing it started off with was Christ was not a Christian. <laughs> oh, know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a Jew. I mean, the point was he was a Jew. Uh, Christ was not a Christian. I said, how can Christ not be a Christian? He, he is, is Christ. He is Christ. <laughs> so uh, the word Christian means to be Christ-like. So Christ wasn't Christ-like? I, I don't get that at all. So somebody better rethink their little post <laughs> and... And go back to the reality of things. So here we're saying we put on what? Him. Right. We put on him. We become like him. Mm -hmm. We come, uh, we, we see the image of who he is. And, you know, I think it's more than just portraying that image. I believe there's a real thing that happens yeah. that causes us to become that. Right. That we are uh, created in him, a new creature. Mm -hmm. That we have an old which we put off, and we have a new, which we put on, and we put the old off every day so that we can put on the new every day. It's an ongoing battle, an ongoing mm -hmm. struggle, but it's worth it. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's so worth it. I, I see people that have kind of fallen away or have fallen away, and they're not sure what they believe. Eventually, that life will catch up with you. Even if you don't go into the depths of sin, eventually you're going to have to struggle with some things because if you take God out of the equation, you've taken God out of, uh, you, you've taken God out of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if there is no God, that poses so many moral questions. Mm -hmm. In fact, there is no morality mm -hmm. if there's no God. Is there? Right. No, Who? Yeah, no. Who's the authority to, to mm -hmm. say what's right and wrong? Sure. We're left to, to the way that it is out there. You see what kind of mess that is. Yeah. Where uh, they become their own authority. They become, and, and that's ultimately that's what right. it is. You become your own authority. Mm -hmm. And when you do what's right, and somebody else does what's right in their eyes, pretty soon you have a lot of conflicts because everybody's right, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody's wrong right. and does it anyway. You're right, or else you wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Hamas, are they are they right in their minds? In their own, in their yeah. own minds, they are. <laughs> They're fanatical about their religion. Mm -hmm. They want to die. Yeah. Okay, so that's so foreign to us. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, oh, we don't uh, the, the 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 not putting on of the new man has its consequences, mm -hmm. and that's why daily we're not just about following these rules. Right. We're about becoming what God wants us to be in a in a reality. So living in it, living in mm -hmm. it. Okay, so that was verse what? Seven. 
him created that created him in the image of him that created him uh bell verse 11 for there is neither greek nor jew circumcision nor uncircumcision barbarian i don't know that one okay <laughs> scythian that sounds good bond nor free but christ is all and in all mm. all right so all of our little categories that we make he said there is none of that no bond, no free, no barbarian, no Scythian, whatever that is. Uh, uh, no circumcision, no uncircumcision, no Jew, no Greek. In the kingdom of God, in the church, all of that is done away with. Um, it, it's a level playing surface. We are all the same. It doesn't say that uh, servants... Or masters, you should free your servants. A little later, it says, "Masters, be good to your servants." Mm -hmm. Even well, I don't want to stay out of that. I'll be hung tomorrow. But <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Christ is all and in all. Just a couple thoughts on barbarian. It started off with <laughs> a barbarian is somebody who used. Uh, words like we've been talking about bad words not not cuss words but more negative words uh, critical words uh, but eventually it became it, it turned into uh, the idea of these people are cruel people so when I think right. of a barbarian I see the Conan. Vikings coming down into <laughs> Conan. Conan. I see Conan Conan the barbarian there you go and he's from the north country right mm -hmm. he's a he's a Scandinavian probably and that's where the barbarous people come no not, not so much. I don't know I don't know I've, I've never been to Minnesota I don't know that. I don't know if I get that. <laughs> man you can't ever get it right <laughs> okay uh, but it's it, the word barbarian begins with the way of talking that was real crude and, and uh, ungodly and the same thing is true with the other ones, Scythians. It's their, their manner of speech was, uh, was crude. Uh, but interesting, though, uh, when I was looking up that meaning, it said they were, they were thought to be people of Russia. I'm like, well, they haven't changed. Oh, wow. but, and, uh, so none of that matters in the church. Nope. Andrew Urshan goes up to Russia and converts thousands of people back in the early part of 19th century or the 20th century and once they are in the church they're no longer any of this because right. God changes us from what we were into what he has designed for us to be uh, okay Diane, do you want to read today okay if you don't our lesson's getting shorter <laughs> she says oh amen <laughs> my bible uh, gives a good description okay. of Scythians okay the Scythians were a tribe of nomads and warriors from West Siberia, inhabiting the Caspian area of the Black Sea from about 2000 BC. In the late 8th century BC, they moved into northern Persia. Their initial advances to the southwest were checked by Sargon of Assyria. Paul is using them here as an example of barbaric people uh -huh. who were constantly at war. Okay, okay. <laughs> she lost it all or something. Wow. There it is. <laughs> no, that, that's really good. I, I mean, it goes farther into my little definition, but that's that's good to get that background because, right. you know, next time you read that, you got an idea what in the world that's talking about. Yep. Barbaric warriors, nomads, just mm -hmm. the, the kind of people that... Mm -hmm. You know, we eat at Genghis Grill. I think they are bar barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> they cooked on their shields, you know. All right. Uh, Diane, go ahead with that, uh, the next one. That'll be our last one for today. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, hum kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering. Oh, oh those things are a lot different than what we've been reading about, isn't it? Just reading it lifts my spirit. Right. We've been talking about all this nasty stuff, right. and now he's talking about the things of God, the new man, and it's mercy and kindness and humbleness right. and meekness. Go ahead and read 13 too. We yes. can't split that up. 
Me? Yeah. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, if any man have a quarrel against any, any. even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Okay. Amen. Some good advice there. Yes. All right. This is where we ought to be living. This is the things that should be fruits of our spirit, the spirit of God putting them in us. And a lot of good stuff there because if we don't do what's written there, we'll never be able to, uh, we'll be at war all the time too. Mm. We'll be barbarians because we don't have that <coughs> In a patience. different form. Yeah, in a different mm, form. Because a lot of people that are barbarians, they show affection towards each other and, you know, in the world, I'm not going to say barbarians, but out the lost or whatever that uh -huh. don't go to church. They like, why would I go there? Mm -hmm. You know, I find more friends or right. more people up here that are right. nicer to me than when I go there. Wow, and that's true. Mm -hmm. So the truth. So if if the if the old man is not replaced by the new man, all you have is a toned down version of the old man. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so these qualities have to be in us, or what she says is absolutely true. It's easier to find loyalty and and compassion and all the, uh, I mean, compassion people have. I, I notice that if somebody puts up a difficult thing on Facebook, you don't have to be a Christian to show compassion. Yeah, right. 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 Yep. But we should be the first in line to do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, you can, you can uh, show the opposite and still be in church. Yeah. And that's when they have room to accuse Mm -hmm. the body of Christ because mm -hmm. well, I don't want to be that and she said that well yes, yeah. alright so uh, we're moving on through with some practical stuff and we'll stop for today because I don't think we have another hour and a half to read another round so <laughs> we'll do that next time appreciate you thank you for being uh, attentive and your contributions thank you pal for your yeah. lesson mm -hmm. and um, thank you for all working at competencies in whatever area you're at right now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. love the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you for being with us this morning.